so it goes like that um, so by uh, ILS is actually instrumental landing system okay so I have uh, briefly explained on that hmm? which guides it actually guides the pilots to uh, to the runway using two electronic beams of for vertical and lateral guidance like uh, it's two vertical vertical no no and then vertical at one of them other even the like if you see uh, on the runway uh, like uh, it has actually uh, it actually emits out an information like uh, it has sensors the sensors actually uh, absorbs uh, the, the, the information on the ground like um, for example if I'm on the runway when the flight is going to land if I'm standing nearby by the sensors it will actually uh, like you know record my figure and it will send up to the satellite and the satellite will, will process that information and send it back to the um, to the cockpit in the cockpit they will show that okay in within uh, once you land within the first hundred meters you have an obstacle uh, they will show it's a human they'll in a figure they'll show they won't show the image but they'll show that it's an uh, image uh, of a human being or if it is uh, any debris of cardboard or anything they will show that they have these kind of things so once the flight is going to land the ATC will give uh, information uh, to clear out every everyone usually nobody uh, walks in middle of the runway but there will be some obstacle which the uh, pilot has to face so beforehand of landing you can, you can get the information like that okay now we will get into the terminal side uh, terminals is actually the area where the passenger actually comes and uh, their luggage fright and everything will be processed in a way that it could be uh, loaded inside the aircraft it is not like uh, those who you have uh, taken the uh, the flight uh, clearly know that it is not an area where you will be uh, giving directly going and you know, giving to the aircraft door no you are not going to do that you are going to check-in counter and once your luggage passes off the people on the ground floor or on the same floor they will be uh, you know, uh, putting it into a truck and this 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 thing will be taking it to the aircraft so uh, there is another process involved in this thing so terminals are actually housing all these kind of activities terminals also is actually it is a processing facility for which technological changes have been constant and profound uh, terminal buildings have seen lot of technological changes in the past 70 to 80 years because uh, beforehand it was just a uh, a normal thing it was not at all like a, uh, with a uh, lot of technologies or like with, with all the you know facilities and amenities now we have like cushion chairs you know air conditioning like what all techno what all facilities that you can avail from outside the airport everything is housed inside the airport itself mumbai Air no, sorry uh, singapore airport has a facility of like uh, having a theater inside film theater so these kind of amenities are been uh, given by the airports nowadays Mumbai airport has a museum inside so it does not give you a boring uh, scenario of an airport where you have to sit in a chair for like three hours four hours and then you know board your aircraft so it, uh, it as time has passed uh, passed on the uh, the technological advancement is also been uh, affecting the airport terminals also uh, nowadays we have like automate automation automation means automatically doing things for example uh, luggage, uh, luggage scanning is also uh, been done automatically by a machine beforehand it was been done the scanning was done by a um, by an officer security officer now it is not there now you know check-in procedures are also automized if you see Qatar airport uh, Doha airport has um, private I mean like automatic uh, you know uh, things been implemented like you go to check-in counter nobody will be sitting there you just give it and it will be processed it is actually on a pilot basis right now but uh, it is not been implemented fully but in future all the airports will be preparing for automation because they cannot hire more and more and more people uh, just for uh, passenger experience 
but this automation is also an important part of it and it goes like that okay so uh, that is there and now we will come to land side uh, if you can just see here nearly every air trip starts and ends with a car bus or a train ride obviously right every uh, air trip because that means uh, you're going to Kannur airport you're going to Bangalore airport you go to Chennai airport you have to go via train so uh, train or like car or like bus right to reach the destination nowadays we have uh, if you see uh, Bangalore uh, Chennai uh, Mum uh, Mumbai and Delhi airports they have um, metro rail which is going inside the airport terminal or at least in the airport compound so that passengers can you know uh, can actually uh, disembark and go to the airport terminal so it is a modern way of uh, passengers approaching the airport so but majority what it will happen is that they will come in their own vehicles or at least in taxis so what they will do is that uh, they need to have a parking space for that parking space is highly necessary because if you are coming for example i am living in uh, cochin and i have to travel to uh, delhi uh, for uh, you know for an important uh, meeting and i live alone and what will i do with my car i will have to park it in a uh, parking spot paid parking parking spot of cochin airport so that i will fly and when i come back I can pay the charges and then I can uh, you know uh, uh, get my car back so it has to be there so the uh, the land side committee the land side of the land side section of the airport has to give appropriate uh, parking space for uh, the passengers uh, temporary you know car parkers uh, staffs who are working inside the airport they also need a parking space so these things have been given uh, by the land side uh, area technological improvements to elevate this problem uh, problems means congestion like earlier uh, in the 90s we had nine early 2000s also we had this congestion like a lot of public vehicles private vehicles coming in and you know getting in a traffic jam in an airport there should not be no traffic jam citing uh, uh, security reasons okay so it goes like that and uh, next is protection of environment protection of environment which is actually uh, an important factor because uh, protection needs to be given um, because the airline industry that that airport itself can generate lot of uh, wastage which has to be taken care of you cannot uh, take away the wastages of an airport and pile it somewhere else it is toxic it is not like uh, what you see plastic or something like that. it is even toxic than a plastic i would say uh, what are the effluents or the you know the wastage it produces the hydro the 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 oil you know that right a vehicle for uh, as big as uh, aircraft will uh, will uh, you know, uh, will have oil wastage fuel wastage hydrochloric flu uh, hydraulic fluid sanitary sewage and de-icing chemicals de-icing and all is like uh, in cold countries they have snow, snow piling up on the surface of the aircraft so what they'll do they'll put this de-icing thing uh, de-icing chemical when you put this chemical on the top of the ice it will melt down and you know it will that that, that that thick slab that, that thick pile of uh, uh, de-icing chemical will actually fall on the ground so what it will do it has to go down or it has to be washed away right when you wash it away where you will put it you have to have a separate sewage line that means drainage line which will take all this dirty you know uh, water or the fluids to a separate location so this this is actually a part of protecting the environment With the advent of jet age, aircraft noise become a major issue for residents living nearby. We have already discussed that thing, right? It's an issue, like we were taking off, landing, everything is an issue. So what they did, quieter engines had to be replaced. That means, you know, technology-wise, they had to do something. They had to re-update, update, update on the uh, engine uh, sounds. So they had to uh, work on that. Now we have uh, better engines in the aircrafts. 
so it goes like that and now we have statistics and forecast statistics you know right the count count about something forecast means forecast is actually something uh, about prediction prediction is called as forecast so it goes like that what is the statistics here uh, in nine uh, in 1945 much before two years before India's independence the uh, the air traffic civilian air traffic in the world was just 9 million it seems and by 2010 it is 5.6 billion imagine what it were what it has come uh, during 2020 the this this count would be triple or double who knows the number of people flying expressed as a percentage of the world population is 0 0.7% in 1945 to 27% by 2010. Uh, so it goes like that because we can pull up any number of data uh, from any uh, source because uh, airline industry is only the, the only industry which actually uh, has no limitations it has always been growing it has always had demands it has influenced governments it has influenced uh, individuals or people i would say because uh, it is the fastest uh, mode of transport as of now tomorrow we don't know if there is another uh, mode of transport which actually uh, overtakes airline industry uh, you know uh, god bless us but uh, as of now there is no industry of that sort and the end they are sh sh uh, saying that uh, airline industry by 2027 is set to have 33 percentage of um, world population flying 33 percentage might be a lesser number but it is actually a it actually covers millions of people millions of people are traveling uh, especially our you know uh, Indian government has provided this Udan scheme which actually provides like a very less uh, amount for one hour travel so that is actually you know encouraging people to use uh, air travel so that goes like that if you can just see figure number 1.1.7 if you can just see uh, here uh, this uh, statistics between 2007 to 2027 uh, it is prediction from 2017 it is actually a prediction uh, thing because by 2021 27 uh, the growth rate of uh, global passenger traffic can uh, triple from 2.3 percentage to 4.1 percentage it is just estimation prediction that it might happen like this it can also double it can cross this uh, six percentage uh, benchmark so it goes like that okay so at the end uh, is a unit overview uh, nothing as such uh, we are just seeing what all we have studied early airports just please see 1.2.0 is the unit overview early early airports had only basic functions designed at meeting the people needs of early flyers as air transportation evolved airports become more complex entities yes obviously we know that right airports have become more complex in its uh, structure and uh, we have to uh, cope up with that uh, please try to uh, visit all these kind of airports then only you'll come to know how big the airports are okay so uh, thank you for uh, listening to this class uh, we will continue with this uh, uh, last section last leg of this chapter in the coming video third video till then thank you and namaste